Hi everyone, Mature Simmer here. So I'm back here with the first of what will likely be several uh, tutorial or how-to videos about this sim, Tower Simulator 3. So in this one, I'm going to cover something that I spent a good amount of time the last 24 hours working with, and that is taking a schedule that someone has created and getting it working in the game. So I've run into some issues that I had to solve and so forth, and so I'm hoping by sharing my experience that will help others learn how to use this, especially if maybe they're less tech-savvy. Because what I have found with this game is even though I am an expert in tech, it challenges me in figuring out and troubleshooting what's happening. So one of the more common ways that you're likely to enjoy Tower Simulator 3 if you choose to play this yourself outside of the career mode is to just do quick play, which is really kind of the heart and soul of what this is. Because once you work through the career scenarios, the longevity of the game is just figuring out what you're going to do and just managing traffic at an airport that you feel like working with in that session. So when you come in here, if you have the world traffic and world color, you're going to get these airport databases. And typically for any airport, these are your choices. But what you may not be aware of is you have endless possibilities. So my source thus far for some schedules to play with, because I am new to the game, I've had it for less than a week, but I just want to kick the tires and see what's possible. And so on the official Feel There official Discord, which you can see here, uh, you can find your way onto it, I think, from various links on their official website, there is a schedules channel under the community tab and you can see here people in many cases are putting out real world schedules sometimes they're going through and uh, you know if we look at some of these they've got retro schedules uh, there's one here at Raleigh Durham without regional aircraft people are creating things and then you know you can create things eventually too and that will be eventually a how-to that I'll show in the future once I try to do that, I may be a little ways away from that, I'll be honest. I'm pretty happy right now just enjoying the game, but the curiosity in me and the tech person in me was like, let me see how this works and let me see how difficult it is. So I pulled three sets of schedules from here that I just thought would be interesting. So and what you'll get here, for example, is I pulled a Nashville schedule for September 29th. I pulled a custom LaGuardia schedule for December 27th of 2022, I believe. And then I came across this Heathrow schedule for an entire week uh, of about a week ago. So just, I think, mid-November 2023, and it has six days of schedules in it. So I'm going to start with the most basic situation. So within the file, you're going to then have a folder with some name. You can call this whatever you want. You can keep whatever the creator had. And then you're typically going to see a set of files like this. So basically all you need to do is copy this folder into the directory where you have Tower Simulator. So in my case, I have it on a D drive. And if I go into Tower Simulator and Airports, you're going to see all the airports in the game. Now at this point, I have gone ahead and purchased the airports that are on discount for Black Friday. What I did find when I went in is all these airports are still listed. All these folders are there, even if you have not purchased them. So for example, I don't I did not purchase Atlanta yet because it is not on sale. It's brand new. And also Fort Lauderdale. You can see the you know this is when I would have installed the game itself and those folders correspond to the folders basically for the base game that are there as well. So you will see all these folders whether you've purchased the DLC for the airport or not. So then in this case within Nashville KBNA you go into that airport you go into databases and normally you're just going to see default and if you have world color and world traffic you're going to see Nyergis design and you just paste that directory in here and so it's the exact same directory and then you are basically ready to go within the game so if I go back here select Nashville you can see you know I've I've worked with it but instead of just having default in Nigers now I have KBNA I can keep the airplane set to give the liveries 
the same. So, because they, 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 you're not being supplied that. And then I get real-world liveries for real-world schedules. And it's that simple. You then just go ahead, make your other settings, start your game, and you will then be using a custom schedule. So let's move on to something a little more advanced with the schedule. And this is where I ran into some challenges and just had to experiment kind of using my knowledge of, okay, I understand how tech works and I think this is what is happening. Because using these schedules, which are again, the daily schedules, so you can see I've got six days of schedules here for Heathrow. I had problems within the game simply by following the instructions that they had on the Discord, which was just rename the files and go forward. There's a little more to it than that. You have to have a general understanding of what's happening, and I'm going to introduce this concept I do at times in my training of curse of knowledge. So for this individual, they know exactly what they want to do, they know how the game works, and they're assuming a base level of understanding for someone that likely isn't there if you've never done what they've done. So Curse of Knowledge is basically a concept of it's difficult for us to remember what it was like, what it felt like, what we didn't know before we know what we do know. So therefore we leave gaps when we're explaining to people what they need to do because we just assume it's common knowledge and it's not. So the instructions from this individual were partially correct, but there was a lot more that you need to do. So if I hop back over to my airports in Tower Simulator 3 and go into Heathrow and go into databases, you'll now see I don't have just one folder like I did. I have created six folders. So this is again part of the information they don't share. You need to break each of those schedules into a folder. But if you just do that, you're still going to have a problem. You're going to have errors upon loading. So you're taking, in this case, Schedule Sunday and removing Sunday and just leaving it as Schedule CSV. But the game needs other files. So the first error I got was that it was missing a package TXT. If you look at this package, I simply copied the package TXT from the KBNA schedule that I used because I realized this is just a descriptor of what this is, and I think this allows things to appear in the menu in the game to tell you this is what you're using, or it may show up in the log files when it loads so that someone understands this is the package, i.e. the schedule that I'm doing. The rest of these, as I've looked through them, this provides the airline names and call signs. This provides all the other airports that connect to the schedule you're dealing with so that it's aware. Frequencies if you're doing multiplayer or you're playing with frequencies and you need to use the frequency numbers so if someone wants to put in the frequencies for the airport they can do that. General aviation flights are here. The schedule is as I said the majority of the flights. Those are I think the ones that are not general aviation. And then terminals allow the creator of the schedule to go that extra step which will assign the proper airlines to the appropriate terminals and the appropriate gates. It looks like you can go out again when I'm creating schedules and I'm working with it and I've had more experience with it I'll have a how-to on that with a lot more detail. I am just speculating now from looking at these files as you can see they're CSVs, they're TXTs you can open them up in anything that works with those type of files and comma separated value files, CSVs you can use Notepad for any of these files if you want, but you can see I, I was opening them in Excel and that's what they come up as. But the other problem then you have, and I didn't test this, but just to be sure, the game is likely to have given me an error if I just gave it a package TXT of, oh, I'm missing this. Or it would have acted in a way that would have been unexpected. All I did was take the other files that exist, in this case, from the Nigeris design directory other than the package so I didn't take the schedule because this is the schedule that they provide which is a real-world schedule that they've built but this will give me the airlines airports frequencies general aviation and the terminal assignments for Heathrow from the official world traffic product within the game and then I have those attached here the logic that I used in thinking that this would make sense is 
they're providing me a real world schedule here as well and so therefore they're using real airlines that we'd like to go to the actual terminals and so forth and are coming from the actual airports that we would normally have associated with Heathrow. So once again to summarize at the end of this little, slightly more advanced version of a schedule I had to create six folders to cover the six days. I chose to name them the dates of the schedule, nothing more than that. So this is what will appear, this folder name is what will appear in the drop-down in-game. So if I now go back to the game and go to Heathrow, you'll see I have 11, 12, 13, 14. So you can see what I'm talking about. This, those folders appear in the game here, and then you can make your appropriate selection. So name the folders accordingly so it's descriptive, and especially if you choose to keep a lot of different schedules so that you can play different things. Come up with a naming scheme that works for you, because you're the one selecting them. Then I went ahead and renamed the files from Schedule Sunday, Schedule Monday, once I've cut and pasted them into the appropriate directory, to just schedule.csv, because that's what the game is expecting, and then I copied a package TXT from somewhere. I could have just as easily done it from here, but I had already gone ahead and placed it there from the BNA file that I had, and then realized, well, the ones that are working have all these other files. I likely need all these other files. Where can I get them? And rather than pull those from BNA, because obviously he throws in Britain, he throws in the United, you know, the United Kingdom. RDU is in the US in North Carolina. They're dealing with different flights. Flights are coming from different airports. They have different airlines that are coming in. Having played a good amount of time in this Heathrow database, there are airlines I've never heard of in the US that are flying into Heathrow. And obviously British Airways is a key airline and they're 90% of what's coming into and out of Heathrow. That's not in RDU, so it's possible the airline's database doesn't even have British Airways in the RDU database because RDU is not international, I believe, and if it is, I don't know that anything flies direct to Heathrow. So basically then that meant then I have a full set of files by pulling it from that, and I am then able to use this in-game. So hopefully that was clear enough. If it's not, certainly drop your questions in the comments. I am more than happy to help people. I love helping out. This is, you know, a big reason why I do what I do on YouTube and on the channel is, uh, per the name of the site, I look at Sims very, very seriously, uh, you know, as, as the mature Simmer, and I am trying to dissect them and make them work as real world as possible, and those are the Sims I tend to be drawn to. I'm not looking for an arcadey solution and that's why tower sim has really resonated with me but this was something that i spent a good amount of time troubleshooting and figuring out and so i'm hoping putting this video out will help those of you also are looking to do something similar and add something new to your game if you've been afraid of custom schedules hopefully we can get you over that hurdle and you can take your enjoyment of Tower Simulator 3 to the next level. This video has been helpful. If you've liked it, please consider hitting the like button if you haven't already. Helps with the YouTube algorithm and gets this information out to more people. Help other people who are struggling with Tower Simulator 3 get over that hurdle of custom schedules. And if you are not a subscriber to the channel, I would appreciate if you'd please consider that as well. And with that, I will see you next time.